ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, if my phone rings, I probably won't answer it, but it will probably ring during the time of the 15 minutes or so that we'll be doing this particular video. Just wanted to show you. I want you to pay attention. Where do I find GPRALCTAS, VPNs, VPNs, DUNS, and other information? Hold on now. Let me make sure y'all see GPO, Government Printing Office. GPO, this is an official document, official. Okay? Now, they, they give you the, the government, uh, the so called, so, so called, gotta say it right, so called government addresses, okay? The CADs, the, the commercial buildings, and then the, the GPOB billing, blah, blah, and then the deposit, it, 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 it just gives you all that junk that you don't need. Now, hold on now. I want y'all to pay attention. The IRS has an EIN number. I didn't give them an EIN number. That's the IRS. Who gave the IRS a federal employee identification number? Who gave them that? They gave that to themselves. They must have one because guess what they do? They do business. This is their business partner, partner number. Business partner, partner number. Okay? They partners, partner. Okay? Business partners, partners. See? Partners. That's the IRS. They 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 business partners. So as I told all of you, I don't have time for playing games with the IRS or the Treasury or the so-called government. We have an agreement, a contract. I did an arbitration with them. We did the contract first. Conditional acceptance, notice of change in terms of agreement. They said, hey, we're going to get back with you. Thank you for accepting my contract. But we're going to get back with you in 60 days. Doesn't matter. The contract already said you have three days to opt out, 10 days to respond, and if you want an extension of time, it cannot be more than 20 days, so they got their 20 days total. Ladies and gentlemen, they didn't respond ever. So we had the arbitration here, and they got notified. Guess what? Once they got notified, they chose not to attend the arbitration hearing. That's their choice. You see, choices. We all have the right to make choices. So the IRS made a choice. Ta-da! And the arbitrator ruled in my favor. You see, I sent them in 2012 five bills of exchange. Now, I'm going to show y'all something, so I'm going to have to put y'all on pause. Get out of here. We don't got time for y'all right now. Give me a second. I'm going to show y'all something. Got to hit this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is called, pay attention, perplexity.ai. The website, perplexity. Dot AI. Perplexity.ai is a so-called AI-generated model that searches the internet for answers. So I sent the IRS and the Treasury, because they're the same, a bill of exchange. Actually, five of them in 2012 did a video showing everybody. Sent it to the address, used my address while I was in Puerto Rico. I knew they were going to eventually come my way. That's okay! Two for $420 trillion. Three for $680 trillion. Told them, I know I've been amounting some debts. I need to pay my debts. And so I sent it to them. They never responded. They got it by certified mail, and I got return receipt proof that they received it. Then the next thing I received was four and a half years of them playing games with me. So I'm back! <laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize. Hold on. Let's ask ChatGPT if my bills of exchange were commercial paper. Let's pay attention. Eligible paper is a term used to describe certain financial instruments that are accepted by central banks and can be used for various purposes such as collateral for loans or for rediscounting. Here are some key points about eligible paper. Eligible paper is a treasury bill, short-term government bond, or bill of exchange that is accepted by an accepted house or a bank and can be used for certain financial transactions. Ta-da! 
Pay attention. A bill of exchange is defined as an unconditional order. There were no conditions on mine. I just asked them to apply it to my balance. In writing, addressed by one person to another, other than to a banker, as defined. And the Federal Reserve Act defines an eligible paper as notes, drafts, bills of exchange arising out of an actual commercial transaction, i.e. purchasing a home. I tried to tell you guys that all of this time. Nobody pays attention to me. And depending on the nature of the underlying transaction, not just a form of paper. Okay, now, the Federal Reserve Board specifically defines eligible paper as a bill that proceeds of which has been used or are to be used for producing, purchasing, carrying, or marketing goods in one or more steps of the process of production, manufacturing, or distribution. Ah, uh, well, we don't care about what the board defines it as. <laughs> anyway, now, let's continue. The eligibility of a bill of exchange is based on the use made of the proceeds of the note by the borrower and is fixed in terms by the Federal Reserve Act under the regulations of the Federal Reserve Board. In summary, a bill of exchange is considered eligible paper, which is a type of financial instrument accepted by central banks for various purposes. The eligibility of a bill of exchange is based on the use of the proceeds of the fine in the Federal Reserve Act and the Federal Reserve Board. I need this, I need this, I need this. Okay. And so I, I'm copying that because I need it, okay? And let's see if we can turn on Copilot. No, I'm not going to do that. No, y'all not getting my, no. No, I don't want to try Copilot for free. Uh-uh, y'all ain't doing that to me. Y'all not getting my information so y'all can track me. Uh-uh, I have been the track meets before. But y'all not going to be tracking me, okay? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen. I need you all to understand, there have been people who have been doing research on eligible paper and all of that. It just told you what eligible papers are. Your notes, your drafts, your bills of exchange, your bankers' acceptances. And so that $680 trillion and another $680 trillion, another $420 trillion, another $420 trillion, another $680 trillion. I was trying to make sure I ain't ever going to be in debt to nobody, especially the United States government. And the government accepted it, did not return it, and so we did arbitrations because mother, y'all ain't getting over on me. Y'all, we ain't playing this game. And even with the four and a half years, did information on that as well. Like I said, I told you I was going to get that call. Now they get to go to voicemail uh, because I I told you that one was coming. I knew that was coming. All right, let me go ahead and tell you the. I'm going to go ahead and end this. I just, now I want to do this again so that you guys understand. This is not me. This is perplexity giving you the definitive answer. This is not BARD or chat GPT. I asked about a bill of exchange and eligible paper. And now notice, pay attention. I didn't tell it anything about notes, drafts, bills of exchange, but it says the Federal Reserve Act defines eligible paper as commercial paper as, or pay attention at par instruments as notes. Promissory notes are included in the word notes. Drafts, bills of exchange. Your bonds are considered bills of exchange arising out of an actual commercial transaction, commercial paper, and depends on the nature of the underlying transaction, not just the form of paper. Actually, it doesn't. You see, what it did is it added that part. So let's go to the page where it says it's getting the information from. I'm interested. Let's see if we can all be interested. Then I got another short video to do after this. This is a PDF. It's from the Federal Reserve Board. And this is their monetary policy. I am so glad that I'm doing this video because I never would have gone here, y'all. And they got a This is a memo. Okay. Hey. Monroe Economics, Topics in Monroe, the Scope of Monetary Policy Action Authorized Under the Federal Reserve Act. Who doggy? And this is on the Federal Reserve website, y'all. Federal Reserve. So watch this. We, we need to, how many pages? This is 43 pages. We ain't going to be reading no 43 pages. We're going to do Control F. 
as in Frank. And we gonna do, hmm, let's do E L I G illegible paper. There it is right there. Illegible. See, right? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. It's too small. Y'all can't see. Okay. Illegible paper. 1962. Also see report of the System Committee on illegible paper. Eligible. Illegible, illegible paper. Okay. I B L E. Okay. Uh oh, I, I was typing, but it wasn't typing. Hold on, there are 40 chances of getting that I B L E. 40 chances of getting eligible. Let's do paper. I forgot how to spell paper. How y'all spell paper? There's eight times where this appears about eligible paper. It says, Chapter 7 of the discussion of real bills doctrine. True bills, real bills, not the same thing. <sighs> As provided, the Theoretical background for the Federal Reserve Act in Chapter 9 for a review of the Federal Reserve gradual abandonment of real bill doctrine. See the report on eligible papers. See, the Federal Reserve decided we ain't dealing with no real bills. When using real bills to characterize aspects of the Federal Reserve Act, we'll be using it to include agricultural paper. Therefore, applying it to paper issued for agricultural, industrial, and commercial purposes. Under Section 13, Subsection 2 of the Federal Reserve Act. <laughs> this is in their junk. Now, we're going to go to the next eligible paper because we might as well go there. They, I'll take you there. We might as well go there. It says the objective of introducing eligible provisions of the Federal Reserve Act was to conserve the resources of the reserve banks for commercial purposes, for commercial purposes, for commercial purposes, and to influence the lending policies of members so that they would hold a maximum possible supplies of acceptable or eligible paper. Let's continue. Now here, in this case of Section 13, Subsection 2, discount credit is given to the reserve banks to a member bank on the basis of eligible paper representing loans made by member banks to its own customers. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what's going on. As such, eligible paper that is offered for discount is transferred to the reserve bank, which the member banks, um, with the member bank's endorsement, no note is executed by the member bank. Uh -huh. So, eligible paper. Now, we're not finished yet. Got to go to the next one. I would download this, ladies and gentlemen. Any such eligible paper that is offered for discount is transferred to the member bank. Okay, we already did that. All right. By the Great Depression of 1930s, the member banks had so little eligible paper and were reluctant to discount what they had. That Carter class, now a senator, had to plea tearfully with Congress <laughs> that 1914 concept of eligible paper had gone awry <laughs> and expediency dictated new types of collateral. Yeah, right. So, ladies and gentlemen, eligible paper, Congress redefined. Not the senator, Congress redefined. So, now here's the last part. Senator Glass of the Glass-Steagall Act. The bitter tears of Senator Glass are understandable in terms of the so great a departure from his real bills concept of eligible papers. And that's the, we got one more. And the definition of eligible paper does not affect the slightest control over the use of which the proceeds are to apply. So the definition has nothing to do with how eligible paper is used. So the Federal Reserve as to the limitations of real bills doctrine, which the Federal Reserve Act seeks to impose, as to the character of the paper the Federal Reserve may discount, when the member bank's reserve balance is impaired, it borrows to make it good, and it is quite impossible to determine to what particular purpose the money is borrowed may be applied and or used in a definition of eligible paper does in no way affect how that should be used, when it should be used, why it should be used. Okay, that's what they're saying. Eligible paper, ladies and gentlemen, 
notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances. Watch what I do. D R A F T S. Drafts. Hey, there's 16 episodes. Ah, pay attention. May discount notes, drafts, bills of exchange arising out of an actual commercial transaction. That is, notes, drafts, bills of exchange issued or drawn for agriculture, industrial, or commercial purposes, or the proceeds for which have been used and or to be used for such purposes. But such definition shall not include notes, drafts, bills of exchange covering merely investments or issued or drawn for the purposes of carrying on trading in stocks, bonds, or other investment securities, except bonds and notes of governments of the, the United States. Okay? Now, I just need you all to understand, you guys are agriculture. That's your agricultural purposes. I'm so glad you all understand. Sometimes people just don't understand. What notes, drafts, and bills of exchange included most types of written credit instruments, credit, credit, credit instruments, that's right. Your notes, your bills of exchange are credit instruments. I didn't say this. They're saying this. So I would definitely be going over this if I was you all. All right, that's 16 minutes. I wasn't trying to do 16 minutes. I, I think this particular paper that's on the Federal Reserve website provides a wealth of information for all of you. Okay, the term endorse and endorse have the same meaning. <laughs> There's a whole lot of information here. Y'all need to grab this. Hey, I gotta go, but I'm so glad we had this time together. Gotta go.